Planet X, Roswell Alien tells us 65 years ago of Planet X arrival. There was a crash at Roswell, New Mexico, and all the aliens were killed on impact except one female named Errol, A-I-R-L. She was an officer, an engineer, and a pilot who could remember over one million of her own lifetimes. That's fascinating and you might want to know why we can't remember any of our own previous lifetimes, most of us anyway. She told us that when we die, we receive a high voltage shock and this erases our memory. We can't remember who we are. We can't remember all of our past lives. And then we are returned to Earth as a prisoner. Sometimes the talents and skills that we have developed will carry over and you have someone like Mozart who can sit down at the piano and play it at three years old and people call him a genius. But Errol explained that these skills were learned in a previous life. This is only one of the things that Errol told us about ourselves and about life. I always suspected that the government was lying about Roswell and then I found this book and I read it. I knew a lot about Roswell before reading this book, so when these pieces of the puzzle came into my possession, they fit. I knew that there was a nurse, and I knew that she had vanished. I knew about the bodies and the caskets that were arranged. I had a lot of details about this event, and I left it alone for many years, and then I found this book and I read it. And when something fits like this, it has an impact on you, an impact of truth. I knew that many people were threatened at the time of Roswell. They were told that if they revealed anything that they knew, that their whole family would be murdered. These threats came from our military. They disregarded our constitutional rights, and many people were murdered to keep this quiet. I had no idea why these people were murdered, and I had no idea why there would have to be such secrecy about this. Now I know that the powers that be do not want us to know that there's life out there in the universe, because we might get ideas about being free, and they might lose their captive control over us. This is about money. This is about slavery. And this book makes it clear. The book also gives you answers to questions about all those things you've wondered about all your life. Who are we? How did we get here? What is the purpose of life? Is there a God? All of these are answered in this book. The alien could not speak English. She knew 343 foreign languages, but English was not one of them. So she communicated telepathically with a human named Matilda O'Donnell McElroy. Miss McElroy was a nurse and just 23 years old at the time. She was the only female at the crash site, and she was the driver of the Jeep carrying high-level military personnel. McElroy was asked to attend to give medical assistance to the injured passengers of the alien craft, and when she arrived, they were all dead except one. Because of this alien's rank, the alien had a high fidelity body, which means electronic. She did not breathe. She did not eat. She was telepathic. She could understand what everyone around her was thinking, like hearing their thoughts. Lower rank officers on board that craft had biological bodies and they all perished. And Matilda, who came along as a nurse and a driver of the Jeep, she received telepathic messages from the alien and she told her superior officers, I'm getting thoughts from her. Top brass in the military took notice and they asked Matilda to continue the dialogue with the alien creature. Matilda translated, but the translation was not perfect. Matilda did not understand the ideas. Sometimes the alien had ideas that we don't have words for. So Matilda did her best to communicate. And everything that came out of her mouth was chilling. This was the first creature from another world for our generation. 
We know now that all of the ancients communicated with aliens. But for us, it was new. We were told that we were alone in the universe. Religious leaders did not want to share us with anybody. They wanted total control of us, and so they lied to us. Now we have communication with a creature from another world, and this information we're getting from her is so valuable. The military asked Matilda to ask the alien if her people would be looking for her. Matilda said, the alien said, yes, they will be looking for her. The military asked if her people possessed powerful weapons and how destructive are they? Errol simply said, very destructive. It was not a threat. It was simply a statement of fact. They had extremely powerful weapons. Actually, her people could fire one weapon at the earth and blow it out of existence. But they had no reason to do that. Not yet, anyway. Errol was able to hear the thoughts of the military leaders, and she did not like them. She thought they were stupid, selfish, belligerent, self-centered, and about nine other adjectives, which I can't remember because I read the book. I read the book twice, but it was quite a while ago. But Errol the alien refused to answer any of their questions. For the first few months, McElroy read books to the alien and McElroy was the teacher. At a certain point, the alien knew the English language and then said, now I'm going to teach you. <laughs> and the instruction reversed at that point. Errol told us the history of our Earth. She told us what she had learned about our human species over the last 10,000 years when she first came into this galaxy. She said that her species owns our galaxy and about 25% of the entire universe. They are an extremely old civilization, extremely powerful, and nobody to mess around with. She told us that our planet has been used as a prison planet and that it's ruled by a nasty group. She called them the Old Empire. She called her own empire the Domain. And these words were used because they're the only English words that fit the word that they used, the Domain. Matilda developed a friendship with Errol, and every day Matilda received lessons about the universe and our sun and our solar system and other species. Prior to this reversal of roles, Matilda used to bring in stacks of books, and the alien would give Matilda a list of the books she wanted. She'd sit down and read the entire encyclopedia in one sitting. She never slept, and she never rested and she never tired, and her mind could recall every word that she read because she was basically a computer. High fidelity means electronic, and it means she's a computer, and her soul took possession of an inanimate body. They call it a doll body in the book, but she was basically a doll, a thinking doll an electronic computer that doesn't breathe, doesn't sleep, doesn't rest, doesn't eat, doesn't drink. So you can imagine how valuable it was to have a conversation with her. We learned all about the plants and animals and how they came to exist on Earth and the companies that provided them, one called Bugs and Blossoms. That was the name of the company translated into our language, Bugs and Blossoms. And they designed these animals and flowers and plants. They were the ones who designed the animals to eat other animals and to be able to reproduce. I think it's very cruel that an animal eats another animal, kills the animal and eats it. This is barbaric. But this is the explanation we received from Errol. About 450 million years ago, life simply sprang into existence and the scientists couldn't understand how that could have happened because we were taught that everything comes from something else and it evolves. But about 450 million years ago, there was just poof, life. Where did it come from? It didn't come from anything that existed before. It was just here. Now, 450 million years is not very long for Errol because 
she said that our sun is 20 trillion years old and that all the suns in this area are 20 trillion years old. Our scientists are telling us it's only 5 billion years old and that it will burn out in another 5 billion years when the words of an alien come into direct conflict with the words of our own scientists. Who do you believe? Read the book in order to consider the other idea. So Errol told us the entire history of our Earth and our Sun. I don't want to get into too much detail because it spoils the reading of the book. But when you see this book unfold chapter by chapter, it's pretty fascinating. And everybody who's read it has been in awe. Errol was murdered by our military because they were afraid of the power her people had over us. And the military have kept this stupid act of murder from the people for the past 65 years. It's one of the reasons why they don't want us to know the full story about aliens. They don't want us to know that they murdered the most valuable find ever. We could have the secrets to perfect health, longevity, prosperity, peace, interstellar space travel. And what did the military do? They murdered her. And Errol knew the day before they were going to murder her. And she told Matilda, tomorrow I will leave. And they came in and they grabbed her and they forced her to a table and they electrocuted her and they killed her. And in all the confusion, they forgot, the military forgot to confiscate all the top secret documents that were in Matilda's possession. And so she hung on to them for about 60 years. And just before she died, she sent them along to a, a science fiction writer who had one brief telephone conversation with her 10 years earlier. She sent them to him and she said, I'm giving these to you because I'm tired of hiding and I think the people should know. And she said, I'm dying, I'm old, and I don't care anymore. They have threatened me all my life and it's time to give this to the people. She advised Lawrence Spencer to put these in a science fiction novel, put this truth in a science fiction novel. And if he had done that, it would have come across as science fiction instead of fact. He wisely ignored this advice and he edited the original papers and published them in their raw form for you to see under the book title, Alien Interview. The impact of this story for me was the most influential book I had ever read. It answered so many questions about who we are and why we are here. After reading this book, I want to escape this prison planet by any means possible. But Errol told us we can't escape. We're imprisoned here. That they catch our soul when we die and they send us through this process and that's what the tunnel is all about. You don't have a choice. You receive your shock and you're back here without memory of your previous life. What a waste to have to learn everything all over again every time. It's a prison. I do not want to be forced to live without memory of my previous lives and I don't want to be anybody's slave. This book is one of the major reasons why I started making YouTube videos to oppose the slave masters. And I believe that our slave masters are not just humans. I believe that there's an alien force behind them and they're an evil force. Not all aliens are evil. I think most of them are benign, benevolent, and a few of them are malignant for us. I believe there will be a war between us and the aliens, which Errol calls the old empire. They do not want us to be free. They also might be directly behind the cover-up of Planet X with a plan to destroy our civilization and eliminate 90% of us here on Earth. It's impossible for me to give you all the details of this book, but if you care to read the book, or if you care to have the book read to you, the link is on your screen now. 
There are many chapters and many, many hours of reading, but I promise you, you will never be bored reading this book. I keep going back to it and reading chapter six or seven. I can't remember which one it is, but when I start reading, I just jump in the middle and I start reading again. And around six or seven, I think it's chapter six, I find it most fascinating when Errol has finished her English lessons and she's now ready to become the teacher and she starts telling us about us and about our planet and solar system and our galaxy. All fascinating. After each chapter, you will look back at the many questions that have been answered about life, and you may, like I did, realize that those answers given fit. They satisfactorily explain who we are, where we came from, and what life is all about. I'm not asking you to believe this story because you have no basis for belief. I'm asking you, if you want to read the story or have me read it to you. I've already recorded it and it's available on this channel for free. There are no ads on any of my videos. I like to read and I'm happy to read aloud and record it so that you might enjoy what I'm reading. And it's no trouble for me to attach images and then put it out as a video so you can have a little fun. No book that I have ever read has enough images. And so I augment the book by adding images to help convey the ideas. Because in this book, Alien Interview, there are some descriptions that are not associated with any images in the book. They're not illustrated. And so I went out and found those images and brought them back to show you what she's talking about when she says the pine cone shaped instrument on the waist of some South American statue shows the device that they used to find their people when they were lost. 3,000 of their people got killed uh, in an attack by the old empire. They destroyed one of their bases. And so they came back looking for their souls, and they found most of them. And this pine cone device was able to perceive if they were one of their people. But those people had been through the same process of being shocked, and they didn't even know that they were her people, Errol's people. So I'll leave you now. Bookmark the playlist if you don't have time to watch it all now. Come back and watch an hour of it every day for a few weeks. I'm not sure how many hours it is. It will tell you in the playlist. Thanks for watching.